welcome back to my channel. It is me, Red, and I am joined today by my lovely SL daughter, Luna. Luna, say hi. <laughs> hi. Tell everybody what we're doing. Well, today we'll be reading the story of 3020. Yes. For uh, RFP Camp. Yes, yeah. by Mr. George Edenbaum. Mr. Geo. Yes. Mr. Geo. Yes, Mr. Geo. Everyone knows Mr. Geo. So. Right. Yeah. And we are joined by our lovely kind of co-host, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> He's not in the call with us at the moment for recording, but we still appreciate him here playing yes. the small guitar. Okay, so I will be doing the voices of Daryl, Mason, and a few other characters. And Luna, who are you voicing? I will be voicing Nadia and Sam. Yes! Alright, so <laughs> we're going to be doing these videos in a couple of chunks. That way we can release them intermittently throughout the weeks leading up until camp to get you guys ready and pumped for the adventure! Yeah! yeah. Oh, and we will also be doing sound effects, so... Yes! Like, yeah. kaboom! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's begin. So, we are starting with the prologue. So this is, as Luna said, we're reading 3020, an RSC story by George Edenbaum, Mr. Geo. Prologue, June 20th, 2020. Deafening explosions rock the air, filling the atmosphere with the choking stench of smoke and dust. The once peaceful and quiet summer morning had turned into an apocalypse, some terrible doomsday. Daryl took cover behind what remained of the eight-foot wall that once surrounded Richmond Elementary. Peering through the clearing fog, he saw his friend Mason taking cover on the other side of the ruins. He motioned to Mason to stay down. Mason nodded affirmingly. Daryl looked around at the lifeless bodies on the floor, brave men and women with whom he had fought side by side for the past few months. They were all gone save him, Mason, and a few others. It won't be long before we join them. I'm coming, Sam. Gotta stick around a little longer to ensure our little girl is safe, whispered Daryl, his eyes closed. Gathering the last of his strength and courage, Daryl picked up his gun and loaded his last clip of ammunition. He looked to the other side at Mason. Any spare ammo? Mason asked. Just use the last one, answered Daryl. Me too said Mason. In a bit bid to distract the Titans, they had used up all their explosives. Once exemplary policemen, Daryl and Mason, were part of a group of rogue citizens and the only line of defense standing between Richmond Elementary and the Titans. They had to move fast before the Titans did, but any wrong move would be suicidal. There was no time to draw out strategies, only time to act. Then let's give them everything we got! Daryl cocked his gun, jumping out of his hiding place, and started out, firing at the heartless tink tanks. Mason, inspired by his friend's heroics, passionately jumped out, firing at the titan closest to him. The other dozen members of the resistance followed suit, firing at anything made of steel. As they fired, they heard their bullets ricocheting off the nano-grade steel the tin devils were made of. Daryl and Mason were lucky they didn't get hit by the rebounding bullets that flew in their direction. They kept on pushing and shooting. All they wanted was to create enough distraction for the evacuating helicopters to get, the tight, to get out of the Titan's reach. For Daryl, all he cared about was his Nadia, safe and sound, and for that, he was willing to give up a thousand lives. Daryl ran atop a bunker and jumped onto the back of one of a Titan. Struggling to hold onto any available crevice, he could find and screamed at the top of his voice, You can't have them! You'll never have them! The Titan rotated its head to the back, finding the human latched to it, and with ease, picked him up and flung him forward. Daryl hit the floor with a heavy thump that left him slightly disoriented and shocked. At that moment, his life seemed to flash before his eyes. He saw pictures and heard voices. Different memories crept inside his head. Sam, Nadia, Mason, his former colleagues, the beautiful life he had shared with his loved ones. Then, one last image crept up and kept coming closer. It was the Titan. It moved towards him furiously. This wasn't a memory, no. It was coming really fast. 
He was still in shock. All he could think of was his rifle. He picked it up and tried firing at the Titan, but he was out of ammo. That's it, thought Daryl. The Titan lifted its foot to squash him. Daryl just lay there, blinking, helplessly watching as a two-ton foot loomed over him, about to stomp him to death. <laughs> Y'all. So that was the prologue. Bum, bum, bum. And now we begin chapter one. August 18th, 2019. You should have cleaned those boots. Said, said Samantha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As she leaned on the rails at the waiting station, she looked into the distance, expecting the bus to pull into the station at any time. Daryl looked down at his boots with a smile. They looked a little bit dusty, but not exactly the level of dirty Samantha was ascribing them. Come on, Sam, said Daryl, placing his hand on Samantha's shoulder. They're not that dirty. They are, replied Samantha, still looking away. They don't have to look like the color of your skin before you clean them. We wouldn't be having this unnecessary discussion if you had just cleaned them. No one's looking at them said Daryl, pointing at all the other parents who were there waiting for their kids. And besides, continued Daryl, no discussion with you is ever unnecessary. Daryl knew at that moment he had won, but his Sam would not easily admit to his defeat. Well, I'm looking at them, said Samantha, looking down at the boots, avoiding Daryl's eyes. Daryl smiled and pulled Samantha closer. As, As they, they smiled... A bus pulled into the station. The tires of the bus were barely done screeching before a dozen children jumped out excitedly to the horror of some parents and excitement of others, like Daryl and Sam. Nadia had gone on a week-long adventure with Richmond's survival camp, a trip she had made for the past five years. Richmond Camp was a unique summer camp that trained children to be survivalists. They accomplished this goal by putting the children in mock adventures, which included pseudo-dangerous events, all controlled and all safe. As the kids hit the ground, they started performing a routine that they had been taught at the just-concluded camp. They performed with so much intensity, shaking the very earth under their feet as they stomped hard on the floor. Daryl and Sam looked out for their beautiful 10-year-old Nadia. They knew that she would be somewhere in front of the pack, leading this little revolution. Come on, Daryl, said Sam in excitement. We have to find her so I can make a video. As they hurried through the crowd, Daryl's eagle eyes caught the glimpse of a familiar brown-skinned girl swirling in the air, moving with rhythm of the whole... There she is! Oh... <laughs> There she is, screamed Daryl, <laughs> adrenaline rushing through his veins. Sam brought out a little camera and focused on Nadia, and Daryl took some pictures with his smartphone. It was a thrill watching their little Nadia lead the pack. Her clothing was soiled and dirty, a sign the camp was exciting and demanding. Soon, the little show was over. Nadia picked up her bag, smiling and looking around for her parents. Meanwhile, Daryl and Sam were trying to sneak up on her. Soon, they were behind her. Daryl lifted her up. Nadia screamed out of excitement, knowing whose firm, strong arms had her in the air above everyone else. Mom! Dad! exclaimed Nadia from her mid-air position as she touched the ground. She gave a warm, big, warm, tight hug to her parents. Welcome, honey, Sam said as she ran her fingers through Nadia's hair. How was camp? asked Daryl. It was superb, Dad. The best so far, said Nadia with an obvious excitement. Guess where our venture was, base. Hmm, somewhere in Africa, said Sam. No, Mom, said Nadia, looking playfully disappointed. You try, Dad. Hmm, well, I'd say some enchanted forest, replied Daryl, picking up her camp bag. Nadia's, Nadia's eyes brightened eyes when she heard that. It was close to the answer. Well, you almost got it, Dad. Oh, said really? Nadia. Said Daryl, poking his tongue at Sam. It was Narnia, and we had a big, we had to, we had big killer chickens. Can't wait to tell you all about it, said Nadia with glee. 
I can't, and I can't wait to hear every bit of it. As they moved, Nadia's eyes caught the dirt on her father's boots. Dad! Yes, dear, replied Daryl. Why didn't you clean your boots? Sam replied, patting Nadia on the head. You told him, right? said Nadia, turning on to her mom. Of course I did. But you know how he can be sometimes, said Sam, looking up at Daryl and poking her tongue out back at him. Well, it seems the ladies are against me now. Oh, poor me, said Daryl, making a pitiful face that got everyone laughing. He scanned the area for the truck, and when he found it, he decided to play another prank on everyone. First one to the truck gets to drive, said Daryl, running in the direction of the truck. Hey, you cheated! Nadia running after him. Daryl got a big got to the big truck first. As he opened the door, he chuckled to himself. He knew how much his wife didn't like the old truck and could imagine what she was thinking. Sure enough, as they approached it, he glanced over at her and saw her silently mouthing the words, Old Rusty Truck. He had to chuckle at that. This is the last summer I'm letting you keep this. Hideous rolling rough bucket, <laughs> said Sam, frowning. I'm serious. As she got, As she got to, to the truck, she turned to ensure Nadia used her seatbelt. You should have seen those killer chickens, Mom, said Nadia, excited. We killed them all and saved the day. Nadia made sounds imitating the chickens and guns. Bok, 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 bok. <laughs> Seems like you had a lot of fun, dear, said Sam, smiling at her. Good. My little fighter seems to have been trained quite well. A true survivor for sure, Daryl mused. As they drove off, he looked at Nadia, smiling to himself. You'd have to teach your mother and me how to fight and survive. Daryl fixed his eyes on his little fighter through the rearview mirror of the car. She was growing up so smart and so fast. He hoped nothing would go wrong. As they drove down the express, something caught Nadia's attention. She looked through the window. Sam noticed and looked out the rear windshield. What are those, Dad? Nadia asked, a little scared. The government has decided that police forces are no longer enough to keep our country safe, so they have created those machines said Daryl with obvious disgust. I would not be surprised if in a few months we will all be laid off so that the tin cans can take over our jobs. Nadia looked intently at the robots as they drove past, noticing one big one looking circumspectly at their car. The initials G-D-I were clearly spelled out on its body. What's G-D-I, Dad? It's short for Global Defense Initiative, said Daryl. He didn't like the idea of leaving the safety of humans in the hands of heartless machines. Almost every member of the force was against the initiative, but the government had gotten both upper and lower houses to pass the bill somehow. Machines can never be people, said Daryl as he drove past a group of robots. Don't worry, Dad. I'll teach you and Mom how to fend off monsters of all kinds, said Nadia, still looking at the robots. Thanks, honey. Like, we'll need some of those fighting and survival skills here soon, Daryl said as he turned his eyes back to the road. All right, enough, Daryl, Nadia, said Sam. She knew how paranoid this topic made Daryl. She didn't like the idea either, but she didn't want to get as worried as Daryl was. She wanted to hope for the best. We might all have to go to the next Richmond survival camp, <laughs> said Daryl with a little chuckle. And everybody laughed. But Daryl was serious. He felt in his heart something about all these robots would go wrong. Somewhere in his heart, he hoped and prayed he wasn't right, and equally prepared to face the worst, just in case. He didn't say much the rest of the way home, leaving the bulk of the discussion to Sam and Nadia. His mind was fixed strongly on the robots and every possible negative outcome his mind could conjure. But then, as they got closer to home, he decided to let go of all the robot shit and focus on his family, his true valuables. As the conversation had died down, Daryl hit the button on the radio, deciding to listen to some music to help set his mind and fears at ease. That was a mistake. Instantly, music blasted out of the truck stereo and a voice sang, That's great! It started with an earthquake! 
Really? Sam asked in a sarcastic tone. It's the end of the world as we know it. R.E.M. sang out of the speakers to them. Sorry, Daryl said and punched the radio button into silence. After a moment, he spoke up again. How's uh, pizza and some cold drinks and some camp adventure tales sound for dinner? Perfect! Screamed Nadia from the back seat. Sam and Daryl laughed at their excitement and were finally home. It was time for family. Yay! It was time for Yay. family. That uh -huh. was the end of chapter one. And we will be back with the next video in the next week for chapters two and three. Stay tuned, folks. Yeah.